and welcome to the Cigna Check-In, a series based on the findings from the ongoing Cigna COVID-19 impact study, a study we created at the start of the pandemic as an extension of Cigna's annual 360 well-being survey to research the effect of COVID-19 on people's well-being across the world. Here, we will deep dive into the triggers of stress, where they may come from, why stress may be heightened in these unprecedented times, and most importantly, to give you the tools and information you need to perform successful stress care check-ins with yourself and those you care for. I'm Patrick Rona, Head of Brand and Thought Leadership, Cigna International Markets, and today I'm joined by Dr. Stuart Lustig, National Medical Executive for Behavioral Health at Cigna, and Michelle Lung, HR Director, Cigna International Markets. Thank you both for joining me. Thank you. In this episode, we'll be talking about the opportunities and obstacles the new way of working has brought us and how we can help those we care about manage the stress of this situation. We'll tackle the topic of reintegration back into the workforce, what it might look like, the causes of stress to be wary of, and how to keep your footing during this ever-shifting state of the pandemic. We'll also take a look at the always-on culture of juggling many roles and hats, colleague, parent, friend, sibling, that has emerged for many of us right now, and tips and advice on how to navigate the fluidity of the current situation. In our ongoing Cigna COVID-19 impact study, we found that 18% of all people believe that life will never be the same again. So what do you think the new working normal uh, as we reintegrate back into society will be? Do you think it will change or won't change a result of, as a result of the pandemic? Sure, let's look at what's changed. First of all, the traditional nine to five office hours is gone. People are working far longer hours, a higher percentage of work being done outside of the, the traditional office hours. People don't need to commute. People don't have time to take proper lunch breaks and stress levels are high. However, I also found that there's higher adoption of digital collaboration tools and people are finding creative ways to still connect with each other and connect with their loved ones. So I think in the longer term, the employers are taking a, a look, a fresh look at the real estate strategy, looking at the design of the offices. Um, and when employees return to work, there'll also be a whole host of questions they'll be asking around measures that employers are taking to continue to protect their health and safety. And the most critical of all, I think we need to be very prepared for WAVE 2. As a doctor focused on behavioral change, and as a human resource leader working within a large global organization, what do you both think will be the psychological impact this situation may have on our stress levels and mental well being, both in the short to midterm and subsequently in the long term? Dr. Lustig? Well, Patrick, I think that's a great question. And as a psychiatrist, I can tell you that one of the most stressful things for people is. Uh, fear of the unknown. And there's quite a bit that we still don't know at this point. Uh, people are still anxious about whether or not they're going to get sick. Uh, they're learning about how to interact with each other, both at home and back in the workplace. Uh, what is safe? What is not safe? And uh, people are also worried about other things, such as their finances, their loved ones, uh, and simply uh, missing the regular routines. Uh, another thing that I think adds to stress for people is a fair amount of grief. Uh, many people have lost loved ones at this point, either friends or family members. Uh, and there's also a grief for what used to be normal that we took for granted. Uh, as Michelle said, you know, what is the new normal going to be? What are those workplaces going to look like? And how much time are people going to be spending navigating uh, work versus uh, work at work versus work at home? You know, these are all things that I think are going to play out to your point early on, but then also into the long term as well. I think the sheer amount of information or misinformation, depending on where you're looking, is causing additional confusion. People are constantly switching roles, even working at home, you know, from being a parent to a caregiver, to a teacher, to a spouse. Uh, the always on culture is definitely adding to the stress levels. You know, unless you recognize um, how these stress levels are affecting you, um, it's, it's gonna be, it's gonna get worse. So I think it's really important for you to be able to talk about it and to actually know where to get help when you need help. Michelle, can you provide some advice on, on good entry techniques for people uh, to start checking in and, and, and taking stock of, of how people are feeling? 
Yes, of course. I'm, I, I would say you simply start the conversation with how are you? And after you ask that question, you give them time to answer. Um, and, and don't start then jumping on sharing, you know, your own experiences or your own stories. I think you have to build the trust. You have to make sure that, you know, you're there to listen, that you're empathetic. Um, and there are actually other tools and resources that, that I've used. Um, you know, Cigna, we, we've actually got some free tools and research and insights, um, you know, for people to reference to, to do checking conversations and to measure the stress levels. I've shared that with my friends and family. Um, you know, there are other free online tools that people can be using. Um, another friend, really good friend of mine have actually tried out, the, you know, seeing a virtual doctor. And that was a really good conversation topic. So again, you know, not all conversation will be the same. And as you know, there's no one technique that works. But at the end of the day, you're there to show them that you care. You're there to listen and to offer support. Another potential cause of stress is integrating into a flexi work routine. Michelle, can you put in the term flexi work into words and explain what are the potential benefits of flexi working are? Sure. It simply means giving the flexibility to employees to choose where they work, how they work, and when to work. So, i.e. flexible location, flexible schedule, and flexible time. First of all, it means you can actually schedule your work around your personal obligations and responsibilities. So you can actually go to your parents' evening or parents' meeting late in the afternoon. You can have your yoga session and practices in the morning and actually schedule your work around, around those sessions. Secondly, you can actually choose to work at the time that you feel the freshest and at your most productive. So some people choose to work very early, some people choose to work late at night, and it doesn't matter as long as you get the work done. Flexible working arrangement actually is very important for the millennials, and they do make up a large proportion of the workforce now. This younger generation doesn't believe um, they're actually tied or they need to be tied to a physical location in order for them to do the work. Um, and for an employer, um, you know, it's, it's good for morale and engagement because the, the employees feel they're being trusted and empowered to do their work. Um, you know, so it's, um, you know, benefits all around. Despite all the stress, people are certainly showing great resilience at this time. Dr. Lustig, why is resilience a powerful skill to learn and maintain? And what is the benefit for both physical and emotional well-being of building up resilience? Well, Patrick, resilience is really all about our ability to bounce back from difficult situations that we encounter in our life. And I think we would all agree uh, that this is absolutely one of the most difficult situations that any of us has been through. And so uh, in order to get through this, it's helpful to realize that body and mind are integrally connected. So whatever affects our bodies, uh, our physical health also has an emotional toll on us and stressful situations like this can also impact our bodies. Helping people to focus on ways that they've gotten through things like this before and to really uh, utilize all the resources that they have available to them. Some of those resources are things that are close to home or in our homes like our family members, our loved ones, and uh, part of it is reaching out for professional help when we need it as well. Why is it important to check in on loved ones who may be going through a workplace transition? Yeah, sometimes there's a general assumption that um, the better you know a person, you understand what they're going through and you don't even have to ask that question. Um, but I think that's exactly the opposite. Don't assume you understand what the challenges your loved ones are going through. Ask them, you know, give them a chance to, to share their concerns with you help them brainstorm solutions. And I think most importantly, you will also learn something yourself. Well, Patrick, I think the biggest challenge right now amidst all the isolation and social distancing is how do we stay in touch with each other? How do we stay connected? So just to say to someone else, how are you doing? You know, what's going on? What are you dealing with? And maybe sharing a little bit of yourself too, it doesn't have to be a, an entire information download, but just sharing a little bit of yourself to let them know that it's okay to share a little bit with you. Uh, that communicates that we are all in this together. So we are separate, uh, or we have been separate, but we are still together. And so that's a very powerful message. And no better way to, to do that than uh, 
indicating that you're interested in how someone's doing and that you're empathic towards what they're feeling. Okay, that's all we have time for today. Thank you both for joining me. We and the people around us all face uncertainty of change in the way we work going forward. The many obstacles that come with this are all contributing to heightened stress at this time. That's why making sure you perform regular stress care check-ins with yourself and the people around you is more important than ever uh, and will only gain importance as we navigate the future of how we work. For more information on how to perform impactful stress care check-ins, free advice around stress, and the most up-to-date Cigna Insight initiatives, please visit our dedicated hub. I look forward to welcoming you back with the next episode coming soon. Thank you.